is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word or oh, just to rest upon his promise just to know thus said the Lord you know my mom and dad were preachers amen my dad was the assistant pastor of the Baptist church that I was raised in in the Bahamas and my mom also was a preacher and listen my mom would walk through our house singing that song to the Lord my mom sung that song until she got it down in my spirit my mom and dad are not here anymore they are with the Lord Jesus Christ and I know one day I'll see them again but I thank God for everything they've taught me and poured into my life and this is why I sing this song because there are certain times in our lives we are making very important crucial decisions and whenever I sing that song I feel the same presence of God the same anointing that would come into the house as a young teenager when my mom would walk through the house and sing that song and I just want to sing it because somebody needs to hear this song right now someone needs to hear it right now tis so sweet to trust in Jesus sing it tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word oh just to rest upon his promise just to know thus said the Lord I'm so glad listen to this I'm so glad I've learned to trust you precious Jesus my Savior and my best friend oh Lord and I know that you are with me my God you will be with me to the end Father, I pray over my precious brothers and sisters this morning that's tuning into this broadcast. And dear Lord, as we go to teach the Word of God and talk about understanding God's will, I pray that you would minister to your children, especially those that are at the crossroads and are in transition and are about to make crucial decisions that would affect the lives of their family for all through eternity and forever in this life so speak to your people this morning bring clarity bring direction in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ we pray somebody say a good amen right there now listen I want to take you into the Word of God the, we're talking about understanding God's will this is one of the most crucial things that me and Pastor Amy can impart into your life on how we know God's will how we discern God's will and how we how we just stay in step with God at certain crucial times in your life the will of God sometimes is not easy to understand it's not always easy I wish it was I wish I could just give you a formula but it doesn't work that way we have to grow in our relationship with God and I want to talk to you about something that's very crucial to your life and this is something that we constantly have to apply into our own lives to know and understand God's will listen to this let's go into the book of Romans chapter 12 verses 2 listen to the Word of God be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God so the Bible says be not conformed you can't be worldly and understand the will of God for your life 
You cannot be a fleshly Christian. Are you hearing me? You cannot be an unspiritual person and understand God's will for your life. And one of the first things that position us to understand God's will is by renewing our mind by studying and meditating the Word of God. I feel sorry for people who are going around wanting everybody to prophesy to them. What if that person is lying to you? What if that person is a false prophet? Are you hearing me? And this is one thing that me and Pastor Amy have discovered and learned. The best way to know the will of God is to be full of the Word of God. Listen, the Word of God is the compass or the GPS that God uses to bring direction and clarity in your life on how to know which direction to go in. This is why David said in Psalm chapter 119, verse 105, Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I believe the Holy Ghost have me on assignment this morning. I'm helping somebody. Listen, Jesus said out of his own mouth, in John chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost comes, Jesus said, the Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth. In other words, Christ is saying, the Holy Spirit will use the word of God to bring direction in your life. Listen, many of you write into us and say, Pastor Sean, Pastor Amy, you were teaching on that broadcast and every word you were speaking was, was just directed towards me. You were talking directly to me. Well, wait a minute. I don't know you. That only could be the Holy Ghost who lives in Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy. That's anointing the word of God and bringing it alive to you and showing you how it applies to your situation. That's how we know the will of God. Don't listen. I have no problem with prophecy. If it's line upon line with scripture and that person is not trying to manipulate money out of your pocket and trying to deceive you. I believe in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I believe in all of them. But I believe everyone who prophesy over you, they better be living right. You better know that person because the Bible says, know them that labor among you. You can't just let any strange person who doesn't even have a proven track record or proven ministry just walk up in your life talking about, thus said the Lord. Man, that person could be sleeping around with other women. Hello. Now watch this. So the Bible says if you're going to understand the word of God, you have to be transformed by studying the word of God, having your mind full of the written word of God. Now watch this. He said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, watch this, so the will of God has to be proven out, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Do you know, the, do you know that the will of God is progressive? Do you know that the will of God comes in stages? The first stage of the will of God, the first step into the will of God is good. The Bible says you have to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So God starts off with his good will to lead you to his perfect. Good, acceptable, and perfect are steps to get you into the perfect will of God. Now watch this. The word good right there means it's useful. It's pleasant to you. It's agreeable with your spirit and the word of God. It brings joy into your life. It makes you to get happy. It's excellent. It's upright. It's honorable. And it's beneficial to you and to your family. If it's not useful, if it's not pleasant, if it's not in agreement with the word, if it's not excellent, if it's not upright, if it's not honorable, and if it's not going to benefit you and your family spiritually, phys spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally, throw it out. It ain't God's will. Hello, I'm, I'm sick of some ladies sending me emails. Oh, Pastor Sean, pray for me. Pray that my boyfriend gets saved. He is on drugs right now. He, he, he is a abuser, but pray for him that God save him. Woman, I need to pray that God give you a brain and give you some common sense because that ain't God's will for your life. How on earth am I going to encourage my daughter to marry to a man who wants to beat her brains out? The devil is a liar. You need a brain. Hello, sis. You need common sense. I'm sorry to get that blunt, but I'm not, I'm not trying to make friends. I'm trying to get you into heaven. Watch this. So the first, the first level of God's will is good. The second level of the will of God is acceptable. 
This is how you, this is how you got to judge whether it's God's will or not. The word acceptable there means well pleasing. It also means fully agreeable. Fully agreeable with what? Fully agreeable with the word of God. You can bring it to, you can bring it to Christian brethren. Who are, who are trustworthy counselors, who are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, and they would tell you, hey, that's acceptable with God. I believe that's, I believe that's God's will. Sometimes you've got to get counsel from other men and women of God that's full of the Word of God and full of the Holy Ghost, are you hearing me, and get their, get their advice, bounce it off of them, and see what their response is to you. Because the Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. So let me ask you this. Is it well-pleasing in the eyes of God? Look at what God said about Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well-pleased. Well, the thing that you are considering taking a step into, is God well-pleased with it? The decision you're about to make. Is the Holy Ghost well-pleased with that decision you're about to make? Is that decision you're about to make, is it in line with the word of God? Are you hearing me? So the second level to God's will is, is the thing acceptable? Let's move on to the third level of God's will. <clears throat> is perfect that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So sometimes you start with the good will of God and it progressive into the perfect will of God. Are you listening to me? Because it comes in stages. The will of God has to be proven out. The word perfect right there means it's complete. It's wanting nothing necessary to completeness. It's full of integrity. It's full of virtue. Are you hearing me? If that decision you are making does not line up with good, acceptable, and perfect, throw it out. <clears throat> are you listening to me? I'm trying to help somebody this morning. It's not so much about the money you're about to make from that business deal. What matters, and I feel like I'm talking to someone right now, what matters is, is it good? Is it acceptable? Is it perfect in the eyes of God? I'm talking to some mature folks this morning. Now listen to this. I want to give you the, the last thing that we use to judge whether something is God's will or not. We use the word of God. Now watch this. I want to read to you Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. The Bible says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let me ask you this. That man you're wanting to marry, that woman you're wanting to marry, that job you're wanting to go to, that college you're wanting to go to, that decision you are about to make that's very pertinent and crucial to your family. Let me ask you this question. Does it bring the peace of God in your life? And the word peace right there means quietness, rest, tranquility, exemption from the rage and havoc of war, security, safety, prosperity. Are you at peace with that decision or is it costing you to toss and turn late at night? Listen, if you are tossing and turning late at night over that thing, you need to throw it out. Are you listening to me? If the decision you're about to make is causing you to be disturbed and unrestful and there's no quietness, it's making you miserable, it's bringing confusion and frustration into your life and lack of direction, throw it out. That's not God. Because the Apostle Paul, the Holy Ghost said through the Apostle Paul right here in Colossians chapter 3 verse 15, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. The word rule right there means Whatever decision it is you're about to make, let God's peace be the influencer in that decision. Let God's peace be the umpire that influences you to make that call and say, you know what? We need to move to this city. We need to move into that house. We need to go and get this job because you have peace deep inside your spirit. The last thing you want to do is go into something where you know you have no peace about that thing. You have no peace about that man. You have no peace about that woman. You have no peace about that business deal. You have no peace about that job. You have no peace about that school. Listen, if you have no peace, throw it out. David said he leads me beside the still waters. Are you listening to me? He restores. Hey, Karama He restores my soul. He anoint my head with oil and my cup. It runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Shout yes. Shout peace. Shout peace. 
Yeah. My God, sing it. God is able. God is able to do just what He said. My God, He would do. He's gonna fulfill. Listen. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Never ever give up on him. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Cause he's able. Oh, 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 oh. I feel the peace of God. Oh, oh, oh. he's able. He's able to sing with me. Sing. Oh, 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 he's able. I cover you this morning. I pray over your spirit, soul, and body. I pray that you would stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost. If you make that decision contrary to the peace of God, you're going to pay a heavy price that you're going to regret. You better listen to the Holy Ghost this morning. The Holy Ghost is bringing this word to rescue somebody from disaster. He's trying to rescue you. He's trying to avoid a terrible mistake. Don't go against the peace of God. Be aware of anyone who comes into your life. And confusion comes with that person. Frustration comes with that person. Anger comes with that person. Hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness. You better watch out, friend. Because frustration and lack of peace and quietness, that's a sign that the enemy just stepped into your life. Be aware, friend. I'm trying to help you. We love you. This is why we're telling you the truth. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. I pray that, the, that this decision you're about to make, it's based on the peace of God and the direction of the Holy Ghost and the leadership of the Holy Ghost. The apostle said in the book of Acts, chapter 15, I believe, they said it seemed good to us and to the Holy Ghost. They made their decision based on the Holy Ghost, the Word of God, and the peace of God. And the apostle Paul said, let the peace of God, let it rule in your hearts. We love you guys. Listen, stand with us. Sow a seed into the ministry. Support the work of God that we are doing. We are preaching the gospel. We are not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not afraid to tell you the truth. Even if it hurts you, we know it's going to help you. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. That means that they're going to tell you the truth even if it hurts you because they know it's what's best for you. Every message Jesus preached, it didn't always make people feel good. It ought to make you uneasy. It ought to make you repent. It ought to bring the conviction of the Holy Ghost in your life. It ought to make you think twice about that decision you're about to make. Because we love you. And God loves you. And we are accountable to God. So stand with us. Support the work of God in our lives. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So you, can get all, so you can get all of our uploads from our morning prayer broadcast. And every time we go live, you'd receive the notification. Remember to follow us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Send us a friend request on Facebook. We want to be your friends. Amen. We love bringing the word of God to you. We care deeply about God's people. We care about you. The Bible says the good shepherd cares about the sheep. But not a hireling. The man who just wants your money. When the wolf comes, he's going to break off and run and leave you there to yourself. A good shepherd will lay his life down for the sheep because Jesus is the good shepherd and he's our perfect example. He laid his life down for the church. We love you guys. We care about you. We look forward to being with you again on tomorrow morning. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.